Hello friends, this is Cold Run back with Dragon Age Inquisition. And before we continue forward, um, I just want to share something I just learned from the, um, from the loading screen, which is that apparently, if you cast a spell as demons are spawning from a, a, a rift, it kills the demon instantly. Uh, I think Spell Purge does that too, it said. So I might, because um, I hadn't been prioritizing that ability, I thought it was good, but not I didn't know it did that. And Solus has dispel. Yeah, Solus has dispel. Um, and yeah, Eldritch Detonator abilities. And kind of, I still don't know what Eldritch Detonator ability is. But um, yeah, if he uses this ability when an enemy is spawning from a Fade Rift, that kills it instantly. That's awesome. Anyway, we are here in the Hinterlands. We can go west. We can go east, and I think we're going to go east. We're going to try to deal with these bandits. Good luck out there. Take my party to the old east road. I'm going to kill bandits, kill I can't no more. Okay, I think those are them. Bandits ahead. Nope, yep, those are them. Just call it out there. Just don't no, stealth. Who cares about stealth? Just, just yell. Is this out of range? I really want to get them with this uh, shot. Oh, yep, that worked. Nope. Go for the archers first. Anyone that wants to get away from you seems like a good idea to help them not get to let them not get away. According to my research, the ancient elves may have set up wards near here. Really? If we can find the artifacts they used, it may help strengthen this area against tears. Ancient elves. Okay. Mercenary coat. Um, is that good for Varric? Yeah, it's very good for Varric. Oh, and he looks badass. Too bad you can't see his chest hair, because that's, like, the best part. Um, is he not wearing a hat? He's not wearing a hat. Have an adventure hat, my friend. Wow. He's just been going... He's been going in the buff this whole time. There was another camp of bandits, right? Yeah, to the... To the east. Wait, what was that? Measuring the Veil. Oh, that was, so that was the, no, there's more bandits up to the east, but this is something different. Measuring the Veil, so let's learn an artifact in the Hinterlands. Yeah, let's, let's go there. Look at that art. It's like a, is that Solus, or is that just a random mystical elf? What the hell is this? Oh, this is the artifact. I, I keep thinking up is north on the mini-map. I have to train myself out of that. Who are you? Are you like Win or something? No, Mithras. And Duran Atishan. I did not expect to see another Dalish blood here. My name is Miris. By your weapons, I see you come ready for battle. Perhaps we face a common enemy in the I love your accent so deeply. Leave, I don't trust you, Helmo. Are you fighting the demons on your own? Fighting the demons is pointless. There will always be more. And I have no means closing the rifts. But I have heard of elven artifacts that measure the veil. They may tell us where new rifts will appear. I was not expecting so many demons, however. I believe one of the artifacts is nearby. Can you help me reach it? That I don't trust you option scares me, because, like, is she gonna, is she, like, actually a blood mage or something? I don't know. I think we'll give elves the benefit of the doubt on this character. Farther. Shouldn't be Thank too you. much farther ahead. I do not think I could have done this alone. Oh god, you're totally gonna betray me, aren't you? Like What took you away from your clan? They were all killed by a demon that our keeper was foolish enough to summon. You're the demon, aren't you? I was searching for another clan that would take me in when the breach appeared. Now I'm doing whatever I can to help with this madness. 
I feel like there's a 60% chance that she's the demon that was summoned and she's like trying to get an artifact to either empower herself or make it less likely someone can stop her. So this is the thing, right? <laughs> oh, look at Solus being badass as hell. Oh, where, where's, what the heck? Definitely demons in here. Where's the woman? Where's um, Miris? I think it was her name. Dreamer rags. I gotta stop by the um, the person. Where'd Miris go? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there she is. Right, she's right in front of me. Um, yes, Solus is one up on my map. Oh, that's so cool. What manner of fire is that? I have heard of this, but never seen it before. It is called Veil Fire. It is a form of sympathetic magic. A memory of flame that burns in this world where the veil is thin. Huh. Let's take a look at what Veil Fire is. It's a tutorial, not magic. Huh. To play Spot the Star. There it is. Uh, I thought this was it. No? Oh, there it is down there. Veilfire. Veilfire is a unique source of lighting that only mages can activate, but anyone can carry. Explore to find ancient runes or devices that can only be used by Veilfire. It's a source of lighting, and it activates certain devices or runes. Using any combat ability will cause you to drop a carried Veilfire torch. Will looting do that? No, looting is safe. Blight Wasp Vitar, so this is for Kunari. Silver Nug Foot Charm. I'll be sad to sell that to a vendor. Alright, so we have a couple places we can go. We can go right, we can go left, maybe they'll all meet up in the same spot, it looks like it. So there's enemies here. Oh god, wait, wait, what's happening? I'm, my perspective got changed. Lesser shade. So this is like a little swarm of demons here. I'm not worried about health so much, but why isn't he... Why is Solus not, um... Oh, you pick, you drop it, but you can pick it back up again. Okay, good. Look at those. Is that... This is not a happy place. Why is, um... He not healing himself? Is he already, like, out of, out of strength? Behaviors... Healing Potion Reserve 2. Healing Potion Threshold 20%. Is he not below that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, he's not below 20% yet. Okay. His attributes and his things are working perfectly. Okay. I don't know what the point of lighting torches like this is, but it feels like it's probably not a bad thing to do. Sledgehammer, Vendor Fodder. This is... Yeah, this is the kind of place where you decorate your banisters, your railings with skulls and rib cages. This is not... What were the... I'm concerned about what the ancient elves were doing here. Were they really warding off demons? Are these all things all ward to ward off demons? You got the crying, got the crying person with the sword over there. We saw that statue back at Winter Watch with the snake at the base of the statue. 
you got Scully McGee here with um, a sword coming out of like a death flower. Hmm. More of these Scully McGees on the side. But it's this thing in the middle that really gets me. It's like... I don't know if I want to... If I want to activate the... Um, if I want to activate something right below what looks like a dead person with a bowl of skulls in front of them and their hands doing the home alone thing to their face. Um, like activating that seems bad, but maybe this is just a symbol of all the things you're about to ward off. Seeker, you initially believed our Herald of Andraste was involved in the attack on the Conclave, yeah? I did. The evidence seemed damning, given the lack of an alternative. Yet you changed your mind. You also heard the voices at the temple. Is it so surprising I listened to them? Sadly, yes. Too few invested with authority possess the courage to alter their course. They fear the appearance of weakness. Hmm. The truth is more important than my reputation. And anyone wishing to accuse me of weakness is welcome to try. I like that conversation, especially because both of them seemed... Both of them have, like, reasonable points of view and perspectives, and they're sharing it with each other. Um, I always like when fiction of any sort does that. Reality, too. Alright, let's activate this. We've, is there anything else I can do to put this off? No, I don't think there is. Yes, the wards are helping to strengthen the veil. Oh, this that's area it. should be safer for travelers now. Yeah, well, there we go. Yeah. Our alliance is concluded. Go in peace, stranger. What did they... I want what you found. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to rely on Solus here. Aye. Perhaps you're right. Here, take it. Go with Mithal's blessing. What did you say to just convince her? No, hold on. How did he just convince her to give me an amulet of power? What is an amulet of power anyway? Is it an accessory? Yeah, it's an accessory. What does it do? Rare amulet, level 10. Gain an ability point when used for Solus only. So it's a Solus specific ability point. That's really cool. And so now I should be able to give him uh, an extra ability, right? Yeah, one point to spend. What did he say to her? <sighs> okay. Um, but it, it said special, so I'm guessing that if I weren't an elf or if souls weren't in the party, I couldn't do it. I'm not sure. But I could have killed her, but I wouldn't have done that. Um, Guardian Spirit, uh, Protective Barrier, so I could do that, I could get Rejuvenating Barrier, when you or your allies have an active barrier, the Rejuvenating Energy helps them recover mana or stamina more quickly, that seems okay. Mind Blast, staggers them, your barriers draw on more energy, so getting barrier seems like a good thing. Let's do this, this seems like a nice little low health thing. Barrier is vulnerable to the spell, I have to remember that. Oh, but if an enemy has barrier up, I can dispel that. Good to know. Yeah, let's do that. At some point in the... I think before I go to that, I might... Um, I might start buffing some of the stuff. Like, I might... Some of my next ability points I use will be to buff up the abilities I already have. Wait till they actually spend it. There we go. Okay. Well, that was kind of awesome. Yeah, actually, while I know you're that um, Solus usually uses this at low health, let's just use one now.
Where did the health bars go? Oh, right, they only come up in combat. Veil fire, okay. Wait. Do they miss? Yeah, I, miss, I guess I missed that. Oh, that's the torch, right? That's like the veil fire torch. I don't think I need this anymore. Can I just put it down? How do I drop it? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it'll just drop naturally and I'll get another one later. Yeah, I can't use it outside the dungeon. Okay. Uh, let's go kill some more bandits. Letter on a bandit in the hinterlands. The patrol pattern is not negotiable. Upon any encounter resulting in injuries, mark trail and withdraw to the villa. We must remain in fighting condition to apply appropriate force and keep refugees clear from the area. That's why... That's why the, they weren't just randomly rampaging and pillaging. They're being like a protective force to the villa, to someone's, someone like, someone's private refugee routing force. Man. What a jerk face. Unsigned letter on a bandit body. We don't need any heroes on this operation. We're being paid to keep things quiet and keep trade away from the East Road. Keep trade away so it's someone trying to keep a monopoly or something? When reasonable, allow targets to flee and spread word of the danger in the area. When such as unreasonable kill all targets regardless of colors flown. And this is to, this is the path to another zone, I think. This is the world map that leads to where though. East Road I don't know where it'll lead to, or for now it just leads to the map. To the world excuse me, to the world map. Wrong way. No, damn it. No, god damn it. <laughs> Which is the way I'm supposed to go? Let's go this way. Okay. So we're heading. Yeah, there's another one more group of bandits to take out. <laughs> Wrong friggin' button. Enhanced Toxic Cloud Ring and a Bowstring. Uh, this is a creature item. I'm going to have to take a stop uh, by the creature research place after this uh, session's done. Let's see. No, not character record inventory. Let's see if I can give this to Varric. Yeah, so this is better than... What is this? Bearing a Barrier Penetration? 5% power. Yeah, the toxic cloud ring is way better. We discovered what now? What did it, what was it called? Rebel something queen? It went away so quickly. East road, dispense with the bands on the road to the east. I guess maybe they're near this camp? Yeah. Go for the ones in the back first. All right, we've completed the East Road Bandits. Hence, Death Blow Ring. They're just dropping all these. They're just dropping these uh, rare rings for 
for uh, for rogues like nothing. Like it's water. Leaping shot ring. I was just kidding before, but they really are. I guess they're... You know, that makes sense. They're rogues. Of course they're doing dropping rogue rings. Set up camp. Let's explore around here before we set up the camp. Now these are all just ability... Toxic Cloud Rings ability duration by 30%. Yeah, so let's do ability damage by 30% then. Okay. Um, spindleweed. Sounds good. Codex unlocked. Heck yes. What's this? Unsigned letter in the hinterlands. Preliminary digs have been more than successful. It's been extremely surprising to find such a high quality of the product. The product this close to the surface. If I didn't know it better, I'd think it was growing. Is this red lyrium? Or blue lyrium, even? On one hand, this gives us an advantage. Without having to work with the old families back in Orzammar, so it's very likely lyrium, or take, or even take this through official guild channels, our families stand to make a killing. On the other hand, the proximity to the surface and to the populated areas of Red, Cliffs, Red Cliff raises an interesting challenge. The war between the mages and Templars should keep people out of the area for now. But as soon as the humans are done trying to kill each other, any operation we start will be uncovered. If we're going to take advantage of this opportunity, we need to keep people out of the area. I'd recommend manufacturing some bandits. This part of Ferelden is lousy with them, so they shouldn't attract much attention, and nobody will have trouble believing that bandits would stake out some territory. By the time anyone uncovers the operation, it'll either be tapped out, in which case we'll be gone, or we'll have an operation running smoothly, in which case will be wealthy enough to deny everything and throw some money at the throne by way of apology. So these are some dwarves, definitely. Talk to the families and make it happen. This is too good to pass up. Hmm. I mean, it could just be like all this, um, what did a Proustian call it? Basalt. It could be like these rocks around, but that seems unlikely. Maybe it's, maybe this just lyrium. Because we've seen that there's the, that there's Varric's Red Lyrium quest in the area, so maybe people are trying to farm it. Wayland Yutani style, farm the dangerous thing and hope you don't die. Okay, so we got a couple of codices. Let's see what we got here. Crafting materials. Spindleweed. It is an old country saying that spindleweed grows best for the sorrowful. Verdant spindleweed in a household's garden has often brought neighbors offering consolation, usually without even asking what might be wrong. That's really, that's kind of sweet. Um, you see a plant as like a, a, a mood ring almost. Uh, this originates from the plant's use as a seasoning for dishes meant to speed the recovery of the infirm. That makes sense. The person who grows much of it is likely caring for the fatally ill. Excerpt from the Botanical Compendium by Inez Arancia, botanist. That's really cool. I like that. Bruiser. This was the guy we saw here, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that tank of an art. He's got a mace. He's got the um, Master Blaster style face mask. A warrior wielding a great blade strikes terror into common warriors, but to a chevalier, he is no greater danger than any other opponent. A skilled warrior is struck down by a maul or battle axe in one of three cases. In the first, he is taken unawares in the heat of battle. In the second, he cannot evade the blow because of the nature of the battlefield or his own injuries. And in the third and most common case, he is struck down because he reacts poorly. We do not train enough against two-handed weapons because we disdain them from ourselves. Disdain them ourselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Chevaliers are like one-hand weapon users because it's more elegant. That feels very Orlesian. Um, I think this is a mistake, and in time to come, I hope it is corrected. I have seen too many skilled warriors die because they see a great maul coming down at them and raise a shield to block instead of deflect. I've seen men lose their composure due to fear or anger and engage such a warrior directly, thinking they can risk a blow to their body as they would from a light sword or a dagger. In the heat of battle, even the trained mind will think such things. Those who cannot overcome such thoughts die. So this is telling me to really keep my distance if I see a bruise, or try to soften it up from afar before discharging in headlong. You must watch the weapon, but only to gauge its length. 
Otherwise, as in all fights, the opponent's hips and shoulders will tell his intent. I've heard this from boxers, too. Um, the great weapons are dangerous only when moving or poised overhead to strike down. You must give ground, but only against the true threat. If he advances, but is not truly prepared to strike, you must rush in, cut him, and withdraw you to your guard before his blow is ready. So these are really slow dudes. It may take ten cuts to kill him. Even after the ninth, he may cleave your head from your body if you do not respect the distance he can cover. If you're using such a weapon yourself, mark your distance and do not allow yourself to react to an opponent outside your reach. You cannot recover your guard as quickly as you can with a sword and shield. Keep your weapon moving and measure your blows. A stuttered step on your strike, a stuttered step on your strike can fool many opponents into thinking you out of range and then rushing their defense. In this manner, so confuse the the opponents with the way that you in, so that you move into into combat range. You may kill most who stand against you. Um, fighting in such a manner, you may feel more like a butcher than a hero. But the living may console themselves while the dead cannot. Yep, any, any way to win. An excerpt from A Meditation Upon the Use of Blades by Swordmaster Massage de Jean Mien. Required reading at the Academy de Chevaliers. And I think that's it for his. That's really cool. Um, so, yeah, bruisers, it sounds like, are, are if I see one, it's not. It's probably not an Orlesian bruiser. It's probably a, or at least not a noble Orlesian bruiser. Let's save things up here. and set up a camp. Supplies replenished. <clears throat> Spect requisitions, requisition tapestries. Um, oh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, craft item. Reward power plus one, so we got a little bit more power. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to go ham on those, but I figure I might as well do, uh, do some every once in a while. What is it? You may want to look into this. Ooh, Inquisition. I got a new Inquisition perk. Uh, Hinterlands Geological Survey Recipe. Wait, what? Is that a new requisition? Yeah. 7 out of 5 says some onyx, and I have a lot of iron. Yeah. Let's do it. What else you got for me? This might interest you, sir. What is it? Could prove useful, sir. A hinterlands puzzle box requisition, that's new. I need a crystal grace for that. These puzzles are, uh, serve as entertaining diversions for Inquisition soldiers, not to mention being useful for trade. Power plus one. Wait, let me take a look at that again. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a, it's like, yeah, it's a little puzzle box. Hopefully it won't summon Cenobites. Anything else here? So we got supplies, we got rest. This way is this the scene right? Yeah, primeval red lyrium. I won't. I won't continue that way for now. Um, actually, the first thing I want to do before I even continue that way is I want to stop back in town, stop back to Haven to see the monster, um, not monster vendor, to see the monster researcher person because I have a few things to drop off there. So I'll see you in just a bit. We are the world. Oh, oh, oh we are the kittens. All right, we are here. Um, I didn't know that difference. Are you writing this down? I have a very good memory. Write it down, please. So I didn't know that. Is that? I wonder if that difference between toxin and venom is the same in real life. That it's toxin if it's just. If it's that it's only venom, if it's specifically injected, um, that sounds reasonable. We can use that. So that's a that's a decent amount of experience boosted. Hello, can I help you with something? No, you can't. I'll speak with you later. Travel safely. Oh, I'll hit level six. That's nice. Please tell me if you find something. 
Whoa, that's a lot of damage bonus against humans, damage bonus against demons, codex, codex, codex. Congrats on the kick-ass ring. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, let's see what's new in the codex. Creatures. Archers. So, just to confirm, like, if no, the only thing that changes here is it says researched damage against humanoids increased, right? That's the only thing that changes. There's no new dialogue, right, or no new codex, uh, and no new text. I don't think, I didn't, th let me see. Between Archer and Chevalier is a good kind of patience. Yeah, I think this is, I think it's just this thing at the bottom that's new. So increased damage against humanoids. Foot soldiers. I think we already got that, but I could be wrong. What's this? Oh, it's the Fennec. No, almost. We're, we're getting close on the Fennec. I think we're one Fennec tooth or whatever away from completing that. Rage Demon. No. We're really close on the Ram. Wraith. Wraith is the one we just got. And damage against demons increased. Good, 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 good. If you find anything, please bring it in. Ooh, Inquisition perks. I came here just to collect the coin thing. But we have Inquisition perks. Um You were saying something about Cullen? Hmm? I uh, yes. The Haven has limited space for our soldiers to train. Perhaps we could set up something over here. Where? Oh, they're just talking st basic strategy. Um, let's see. I don't need increased inventory capacity just yet. I've been doing okay on that. I want to stick with one tree for a little bit. Um, increase More increased in capacity. Adds one more potion slot for all party members. Four points needed in category. Gain one combat ability point for the Inquisitor only. That's, I mean, that's... Hmm... Maybe I don't stick with this. Like, that seems okay, but I, I don't feel the need to push down that slot exclusively. I think I want to get more of these things that increase, uh, where's this? That give dialogue options. Yeah, I think I want to go for the, go down that route. Uh, increased study of politics, rhetoric, and those who will, okay. So this is dialogue options related to nobles and politics, less that. Dialogue options related to the fate or arcane studies. Dialogue options related to criminal activities. Because that's the thing I care about. Like, the dialogue is the thing that really excites me. Um, let's do... Let's do... Let's do... So what is... Let me remember what my character is about. So my character is an elf in human lands trying to understand... Like an elf in largely human society, I mean, plunged into human religion um, as the Herald of Andraste. Um, I think she cares about forces, but not specifically criminal activities. Um, I thought it was going to be like tactical stuff, and then I was going to go for forces. Um, I think, and secrets is fate or arcane studies. Yeah, I think connections is the one we're going to go with, nobility knowledge. I think that's going to, yeah, best help her understand things. The question, though, is do we do this? We're at kind of a nice break point in um, just the Trantri address the Chantry in Valroyo. We're at kind of a nice break, break point in um, what do you call it? In the Hinterlands, in terms of in that we've, we've cleared a lot of the eastern part of quests. I want to clear it before really moving forward, but I kind of want to at least see what this does. Like, is it just going to be a piece of dialogue? Is it going to be an invitation to travel there? In which case, I don't have to take it just yet. I don't know. But let's, you know, let's let's change things up for a little bit at least. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Should we do it now? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how we are on time. I'm going to actually, I'm going to do that next time, though. So I'm going to call this for now here, and next time I will address the Chantry in Val Royo. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you later.